Hi everyone, welcome back to Scrap Happiness Studio. A viewer wrote in that she was concerned that when she did the quarter circle blocks that we do at the beginning of free cut piecing, that her circles didn't match up. And I had to stop and think about that because I usually don't worry about that. I love the wonkiness that happens when you just free cut stuff. But there are times when you might want to use a paper pattern and you would I use a paper pattern when I'm either doing a very complex block that I need a road map on how to put it back together and I also use it when a, sh a shape that I'm cutting is is really important to get the shape proportions correct like when I've when I'm doing birds I want to make sure that when I cut and then piece that back together that that shape actually does look like a bird you also might want to use a paper pattern if you want your blocks to be consistent. If, say you were making a whole quilt. You don't want the blocks you're doing at first to be, you know, radically different. You might want that like, like I would, but if you didn't want that, you might want to use a paper pattern. And I do use a paper pattern when I'm uh, doing a block like the New York Beauty, which we will do in the next video. But we're going to look at this simpler video first. Now this is a block right out of a, a book. So this is an old-fashioned pattern that to use this pattern the old-fashioned way you would cut out these pieces and make templates out of them by adding a quarter inch seam allowance on them. I, I'm not going to do that with this block. I'm just going to use it as is. So it's going to shrink up a lot. So there are lots of ways you could take and enlarge this block if you wanted to, and that's well covered in other in other media. But for this one, what I did was take up a, a, a sheet. Actually, I took sheets of parchment paper, and and oh, I do want to show you something. Mark your master pattern as master, so you don't cut it up. So what I've taken is my, I simply traced over this block and I stacked that on top of some other pieces of parchment paper. I tend to use parchment paper for this process because it's strong, but it's also see-through and it, it, and I like it. Um, but you could, and it's large, which is, if you were going to blow this pattern up to say a 15 inch block on paper, then you would need big pieces of paper like this. So my favorite way to make copies of a pattern like this, especially when it's larger than what your printer will do, is um, I stack it all on top. I stack, stack my master pattern on top of a stack of other patterns. And then I sew on all the lines with an unthreaded sewing machine. And I spent a long time figuring out that there was a number of crazy things that happened this morning. But I set my machine up here, and you want to do this with an unthreaded sewing machine, because sewing, just just trust me, don't leave any thread in your sewing machine. Just empty out the bobbin and the spool. Well, my fancy computerized sewing machine won't sew without thread. So I had to take this over to another another machine to do it. So it's a little hard to see, but I think you'll be able to see it as I've gone and sewn. Oh, I hope you can see it. There's a little... Um, puncture marks. Unpin this. I don't know. Can you see that? There's little puncture marks that you can see um, that I'm going to lay these patterns on top of my fabric and cut them out. Like I said, don't cut up your master pattern. Put that somewhere else. And then to get a complete circle, I'm going to stack up four pieces of fabric so that I get four quarter circles. Oh, I have a fold in my paper, but I don't think that'll matter. I'll use one that doesn't have that. Oh, and an interesting thing, if you're working this way, add an extra seam allowance on the outside of the block. That, for certain reasons, 
in my experience, that becomes important, and it's just good to have it. And then I'm going to pin this back on top. Pin where you're not going to be cutting. Now, in also, I just wanted to mention there is another way to do this same block in the handouts on my website that you can um, download, and I'll put the link in the in the directions. It might be hard for you to believe, but I actually write a script for each video I'm going to do, but it's almost impossible to look at the script, talk, and demonstrate at the same time. So. Forgive me for my inconsistencies. All right, so on the outside here, I'm going to be cutting, allowing that about a, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It becomes important when you're piecing this little circle part in here. Now, clearly, you don't want to do this with a fan blowing. And of course, we, um, we're going to piece the arc first here. And you don't actually have to cut all the pieces, just the ones you're going to um, sew together. So you might want to just stop here and chain piece, as I demoed in previous videos, videos chain piece these pieces all together. And then cut this piece and chain piece those all on. So I'm, and, and just, well, I think I've explained that pretty well. And so I'm going to do that. And after I've done that, I'll come back and show you the blocks I've got. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye. Hi, everyone. I didn't realize that uh, the camera wasn't focused on the correct thing. So this is what. You know, after I did that cutting in there, this is what the block looks like. And I'm going to piece this arc first, so you can kind of ignore these things. And normally, I cut all these. But what I was trying to say was it's it's easy to bit, get mixed up the more pieces there are. So I would just, when I'm cutting these, because I'm going to chain piece them together, I would start with these two guys. I just would put... Um, Stack this up like this and chain piece all these pieces through my machine. Then go cut this piece and chain piece it onto these ones too. And I'd complete that till the whole arc was done. So when I come back, I'll show you what that looks like. So thanks for your patience. I'm back and I wanted to show you what happened when I simply free cut piece this book, uh, this block out of out of a book. And I had the thought that I should have just done every other line because I knew that was going to shrink up a lot, but it shrinked up way more than I thought to actually unusable proportions because you can see I can't get, I can't get a block out of this. So what I did is I took I took the three remaining pieces and if you recall I had added on a quarter inch um, around the outside edge of all the blocks. So on that, I took my pattern and cut two more of the outside blocks with the um, seam allowance on them. And I pieced that on to the rest of the blocks and I got a block like this. So there's still a lot of shrinking, but when I, but when I put a ruler on it, I can still get a block. And I got, so I got this block, which I think will be usable. It'll be interesting to see how well, how well they match up. Probably not perfectly, but I'm, I'm not into perfect. So, and so these were the, these are, I'm going to take this block back apart and trim that quarter inch off that and then piece these back on so that I can have four circles again. So this is what I got 
for that last block. And so what I did, you can see this doesn't match up anymore. And I, you know, that's important to get to the lie flat. So I, I just scooched this up over the top till I could make sure that I could fit it in there. I recut this curve and then down here, I did the same thing. I just laid this on here and recut that. So, so I'm something to be aware of if you're using a commercial pattern. And, but the good thing about free cut piecing is you make a few blocks. If you don't like it, you just don't make anymore. It's not like you've made a huge commitment. So next time we'll explore doing a New York beauty that has a few other things to think about in that arc that gets all the triangles cut in it. Okay, see you next time. And remember to look for the handouts that'll be in the link of the description. And hit like and subscribe if, you, if you're enjoying these videos. Okay, thanks.